Hey everyone, welcome back to Video Games and Literature. This is our first uh, real lecture. Uh, we got a lot to get through, so I'm going to um, just keep moving along. First, we're going to talk about the reading assignments for this week. Uh, you have uh, all of your reading assignment for the week in your week one folder on Google Drive. It's five poems and two essays. I'm going to give a short lecture on uh, ways to think about uh, reading those poems. Uh, and then uh, talk you through the tasks that you have for this week, uh, specifically how to do the collaborative annotation assignment on Google Drive. Uh, do remember that you have a discussion question uh, due for tomorrow, Wednesday, by 10 p.m. Uh, you also have your first post uh, by Friday at 10 p.m. and you need to contribute 500 words or more to discussion by Sunday at 10 p.m. Okay, so the reading, you have some selections from T.S. Eliot and some selections from Ezra Pound. Uh, then uh, five poems, uh, they're very short, uh, but very tight, and we'll talk about what that means. Uh, so please read all of those uh, for this week. Uh, before we get on to the assignments, I want to talk to you a little bit about what you're going to be reading uh, in those essays I gave you. Uh, the first one is a selection of, of essays, a selection of parts of essays by T.S. Eliot. Uh, they come from a bunch of different stuff, uh, but I think they all go together uh, to form a, an idea of what it means to read poetry. Uh, for him, what it meant to write poetry, but for us as critics, uh, it gives us an image and an understanding or a metaphor for how to think about what our task is. So. Uh, this is one of the more famous passages from Tradition and the Individual Talent, in which Eliot compares uh, the process of writing a poem to a catalytic chemical reaction. Uh, so <clears throat> it's this idea that, so he writes, the analogy is that of the catalyst. When two gases previously mentioned are mixed in the presence of a filament of platinum, they form sulfurous acid. The combination takes place only if the platinum is present, Nevertheless, the newly formed acid contains no trace of platinum. The platinum itself is apparently unaffected, has remained inert, neutral, and unchanged. The mind of the poet is this shred of platinum. Here, uh, Eliot is trying to make an argument about what the role of the poet is, or the, the role of the talent, where uh, responding to a, a tradition of romanticism in which the poet was thought to be some sort of genius that had divine inspiration or was uh, emoting some sort of burying his soul uh, when writing uh, poetry. Uh, Eliot has a different idea. It's basically that the poet is the catalyst. He's He or she is there receiving the images and when the poet gets them in his head, uh, something crazy happens and something completely new comes out. Uh, what I want to focus on here is this idea of the uh, reaction. That the poet's mind is somehow this box where uh, these uh, catalytic reactions take place and that the result is poetry. So then when you're reading the poetry you're seeing this uh, output of these um, crazy combinations uh, and unexpected uh, reactions. We can see this also in another passage uh, that I gave you from uh, the Metaphysical Poets. Uh, Eliot writes that when a poet's mind is perfectly equipped for its work, it is constantly amalgamating disparate experience. The ordinary man's experience is chaotic, irregular, fragmentary. The latter falls in love or reads Spinoza and these two experiences have nothing to do with each other or with the noise of the typewriter or the smell of cooking. In the mind of the poet, these experiences are always forming new holes. So again, it's this idea of the poet being this filter where experiences come in and they're combined uh, and where a regular experience might not uh, see the connection. If you're living poetically, you're seeing these weird interactions all the time, you're falling in love, you're reading 18th century philosophers, and somehow those are completely related. The point here, and what I'm trying to get uh, us to think about is not how this image of being a catalyst would help you become a better poet because that's not the task of this class 
but how it might help you become a better reader. Because if we think of the text before us as being the result of these catalytic, catalytic equations, or catalytic reactions where uh, the author was combining disparate experiences into new holes, uh, then our task is a little bit different than looking for meaning. Uh, our task is to think about how these combinations happened. Our interest, is, our interest is in what the reaction was uh, rather than what's the product. So when we're reading uh, poets, uh, when we're reading these poets this week, when we're reading this poetry, uh, I want us to be thinking about these images or trying to define what the images are and then answering the question, not what does it mean or what are the symbols or what are the themes, but how did these images come into contact? What's the reaction that occurs when these images collide? Uh, here's an example of a uh, poem uh, by HD in which you get two images that are so combined that it's hard to tell them apart. We seem to be uh, unable to distinguish between the ocean and the forest here. The other essay you're going to read this week is by Ezra Pound. It comes from A Few Don'ts by an Imagist, uh, in which he lays out the principles of the aesthetic style called Imagism. Uh, the poem we just looked at by H.D. qualifies as Imagism. Uh, in fact, uh, all the poems we're going to read this week, except for The Snowman, uh, are Imagist poems. In this essay, uh, which I hope helps you read these poems, uh, Pound right off the bat gives us the three uh, principles of Imagism, uh, which I've paraphrased here, direct treatment of the thing, no superfluous words, and rhythm by the ear, not the metronome. You'll see also this famous passage, uh, an image is that which presents an intellectual and emotional complex in an instant of time. Uh, here you should hear resonances with T.S. Eliot, they were buddies. It's no surprise here that they were thinking similar things about how poetry works. But again, if we're thinking about what our task is as uh, readers of literature, if we're receiving this image in an instant, uh, we have to come back and unpack the complex. What are the intellectual and emotional elements that are combined here that give us what Pound's going to, is going to call this, this freeing sensation that happens uh, when an image works, when you actually achieve an image. Uh, and so with the poems this week uh, that we're going to be reading, try to present us these images, these intellectual and emotional complexes, uh, these results of catalytic reactions. And what we're going to try and do is move backwards, unpack them, uh, to think about how those reactions are occurring uh, rather than what has occurred from them. Uh, this, at the end here, a famous line from uh, Ezra Pound's essay, Go in Fear of Abstraction. Uh, again, this idea that the poem is supposed to be uh, direct. It's not supposed to be hiding anything from you. It's not supposed to be a high, f high and fl flighty and uh, well abstract it's supposed to be direct concrete deal with things uh, to be minimalist uh, and hopefully we'll, you'll see that in the poems that we look at this week so all of this discussion of the poems is preparing us for working on some pre-writing techniques this week uh, as you know this is a writing class so uh, part of the emphasis or actually the emphasis of this class is going to be uh, on composition uh, so it's the first week, so we should talk about pre-writing. Uh, oftentimes pre-writing, uh, people want to avoid it because uh, it can be difficult to be to outline an essay you haven't written and so on, but you don't necessarily do, know exactly what you're going to do beforehand. One of the most valuable pre-writing techniques is free writing. Just taking five minutes and or 10 minutes or 20 minutes, however long you want to take, and just writing out everything that comes to mind without stopping, without picking your pen up, without your hands leaving your keyboard. Uh, the important thing to do with the free writing then is to go back, see what it, see what it was that you wrote, try to identify themes, uh, interests, investments, what it was that you were thinking about. And next, the most important part is then to go from that brainstorming activity back to the text to see if what you were thinking about is really supported. See if it's there. See if there are ways those ideas get complicated or taken in new directions. Uh, and then you can identify the passages that will help you. The pre-writing activities that uh, I've set up for you this week uh, are designed to help you get some ideas moving, but
but then return back to the text to see where they're supported or how they're developed. Uh, so we're going to be doing collaborative annotations this week. Uh, basically, we're going to be using Google Drive uh, to uh, get some ideas attached to actual words and what uh, Ezra Pound is going to call images. So I'd like you to read in a station at the Metro, uh, set up a timer, and free write about the poem for about five minutes. Uh, again, you're going to be writing nonstop off the top of your head without stopping for five minutes straight. I'm not collecting it. I'm just going to trust that you did this because uh, I want you to have the freedom to write whatever comes to mind without worrying how anybody's going to think about what you wrote. Then I want you to go back and look at your free writing. Uh, ask yourself, what does, it, what does it make you think about? What does this poem make you think about? What, Im what images have dominated for you? Uh, where, did, where was your attention? What were you, what were you concerned with? And then I'd like you to go to the document uh, set up for Innovation and Metro in Google Drive and then add comments to the words or phrases that, that you feel are generating these reactions or are tied to this, these reactions. So for example, if uh, the tree really held up for you or the image of the branch really held up for you, you're gonna make a comment off of the branch to talk about you know, where that took you. So I wanna do a little walkthrough of how this annotation assignment is gonna work. Uh, so once you're signed into Google Drive, uh, you should be able to find over here in the left uh, a folder called 14MN294. Uh, I believe I've invited everyone or added everyone as collaborator at this point. If you currently can't access it, please let me know. Uh, it should show up. It, it may show up for you in Shared With Me, uh, but have a root around here. I, I don't always understand where Google puts things in this part, so look around here and look for this folder. It, it hope, I don't know if yours will be blue or not. I, I can't remember. Uh, but if you can't find it, let me know. Yeah, I can put a link to the document somewhere else. Uh, so here's the week one folder. Uh, here are the readings I'd like you to work on this week. Here's in the station of the Metro. So I want you to come here to the actual document. Once you've finished doing all your free writing and then you've gone back and surveyed it to see what uh, images really stood out for you and, and what uh, kinds of things you were uh, concerned with in your writing, I want you to come and mark this up uh, using the comments feature. Uh, so whenever you're ready, uh, select any part of the text. You want to insert comment just like this. It'll give you this little pop up here on the right and then you can insert your comment. Now hopefully everyone will come on here uh, and just fill this thing up with lots of interesting comments. You can also comment on each other's comments. Of course I do, I wrote it. Right, so please fill this up. I really wanna see a lot of activity here. Right, if you have any problems with using this feature, please let me know and I'll try to help you work through them. For your post this week, I'd like you to pick one of the remaining poems in the week one folder. Uh, do the same process we just did. Free write, go back and survey it, and then annotate the poem. I want you to just go, just like we did, Go back in and annotate the poem you selected. Uh, pick whatever you think is the most evocative line, word, or phrase. Whatever it is that uh, really spoke to you or really uh, was uh, driving your free writing. And then unpack that in uh, a post of, of about, whatever we said, three to 500 words. Okay, so that's it for this week. Uh, you're going to do the reading in, in the a week one folder, uh, participate in the collaborative annotation assignment on Google Drive, post a discussion question by Wednesday, submit your post by Friday, and if you have any questions, email or post them uh, under support category on Google+. Uh, thanks everyone, I look forward to seeing what you come up with.